So I have some friends that have uh, recently gotten into 3D printing and want to know about free CAD so they can kind of create their own 3D models. And um, I decided I'd make kind of a multiple part series of kind of the basics of using free CAD. And this first video is going to be a par about the part workbench. Um, this is my first instructional video and I'm just showing the things that I've learned um, from using the program that I found useful and that, uh, you know, I thought would be useful for anyone new to the program. So, go ahead and get started here. So, this is the start screen. This is the screen you start on. Um, so, if you want to create a new project, go to File, New, nothing new there. Um, it'll start you off on a blank screen like this, and all of your other projects, whenever you start a new project, is going to be down here at the bottom. So, you can go ahead and get rid of the start page. First thing um, is uh, the I want to talk about is the view, but we can't really view anything without any objects. So here is your kind of like control panel in a way. It's like a pull-down menu. It has all the different functions of the program that you can use. The one for creating primitive objects and manipulating them is called part. So let's go ahead and go under part. And you see here all the primitive shapes you can make. And you can also create primitive shapes by clicking this button. And whenever you execute a function or a Boolean operation or cutting two objects or making a pad or anything, it's all going to be in this combo view window right here. So you can choose to make primitive shapes through this menu here and then input your parameters or you can click kind of a prefab one up here for like a, you know, cones, a sphere, torus. Um, so let's go ahead and make a cube. And if you look, we're at we're looking at the top view, I believe, right now. So if you hit this button here, it'll show you the basic 3D view. Right now we're in something called orthographic view. You can go to you can change the way it looks by going under view and hitting perspective view to view like human eyes do. Orthographic gives you a more telecentric view of the object, so it's easier to work with, more or less. So once you've created a basic object, we can get into some of the uh, different viewing options you have here. So this is the ba um, the back, you know, the side, the top, uh, the front, the other side, and then the bottom. I mean, I guess it's debatable whether this is front or this is back. It really doesn't matter. So anyway. Next, let's get into editing your uh, shape. Actually, the first thing I want to talk about is being able to move around the screen. So you can zoom in by scrolling, or if you have a trackpad, you can just move in or out. You can also kind of rotate in an axis around the object by hitting Shift and then clicking. It allows you to move around the object for different views. And if you have a bunch of objects lined up along the screen and you want to move back and forward, you hit control and then click. And it allows you to slide back and forth parallel to whatever axis that you're currently located in. And if you notice, once I take my finger off on, of the control button, it stays in the same position. And if I shift and change my view along the axis and move again, it'll still retain that same movement around the object. So it, it, it remembers your movements in whatever position you had based on uh, whatever you did. But if you want to have the original selection again, or the original view again, just hit this button here and it'll fit all of your objects into the same view so you can go back to what you're doing. Or see everything at one time, basically. I also want to mention, aside from uh, pressing this button to fit your selection into the project window, you can also right click and select fit all. You can also uh, select your standard views from this menu as well. Now that we've looked at the viewing options, let's go ahead and take a look at how to uh, edit and move your objects or um, anything else that you create. So if you click on an object, it'll first show you the view here. Um, these are like the viewing and display options. Bounding shows you um, the dimensions of the object along the axes of the object. So here you can see it's 10 millimeters for each. Let's go ahead and turn that off for now. Um, you can uh, dis change how the object is displayed from flat lines 
to just shaded with no lines to wireframe and points. Um, so that's that. Draw style. Um, you can change the appearance of the lines by changing the draw style. Lighting you can change as well here. Line color, line width, all of that stuff is right here. So there's another way to do this too um, in a different menu by um, selecting Control D. Um, and you can also change all those um, configurations here. So same thing here, display options. You can also choose prefab uh, materials here, um, transparency as well. So that's all that for the display. Now to edit the sizes of the um, object, you can select data here. Um, you can edit placement under here, but I'll show another way to do it. It's a little bit easier. Um, here you can see all of your dimensions for the object, whatever it is. So um, you can change the, um, the dimensions by either pressing up and down on the arrows um, or selecting all and then just rewriting it. So 12.03. Um, the accuracy is down to a hundredth of a millimeter. Um, I believe there's a way to change millimeters to inches, but I don't, I'm not sure I always use millimeters. So. Um, let's talk about how to edit the placement of your box. If you select Edit, Placement, it'll show you in the uh, combo view the um, translation in terms of the axes as well as rotation, um, rotation um, of the object in whatever axis you select. Um, another option if you want to do multiple axes at once is to select Euler Angles here to edit the yaw and the pitch and roll. Same as with editing dimensions, you can use key, uh, the up and down arrow keys, or you can also select, drag, and just rewrite your own in there as well. If you notice here, you can change your translations with um, all axes as well. Um, so next, let's look at some other things here, like um, if you want to make the object not visible, like I did with the cylinder here, all you have to do is hit the space button and it'll disappear, uh, change the visibility. The other thing you can do is rename your box or whatever object you want just by hitting enter and typing whatever it is that you want. The next thing I want to look at on the part workbench is Boolean um, operations and which is like cutting two objects or fusing two objects so let's go ahead and look at that. So I've created this cylinder here and let's say, let's use the placement that we uh, talked about before. So if you want this cylinder to be kind of halfway out of the box, so let's go to placement and look at this from the side. Let's say we want to rotate this so it's coming out of the side of the box and it's four millimeters above the bottom of the box here. So we're going to want to go to Euler angles and rotate the pitch. 90 degrees, and then we can change the cylinder's position and the z-dimension by moving it up 1, 2, 3, 4, plus the radius of the cylinder, so that would be 1, so that's 5, and then we hit apply and OK, and we can go back to our 3D view here, and as you see, the cylinder is sticking out of the box here, so that's a, you know, basic thing of how moving two objects around um, and getting them into the position you want them to be in. So now let's look at um, a couple of Boolean operations here. So let's do the first one is called cutting. Um, so if you, cutting is useful if you want to cut one object into another one. If I wanted to cut the shape of this cylinder into this box here, I would perform a cut operation. So I would select the first object which is going to be cut into and select the second object, which is going to act as kind of like the uh, the um, thing that is doing the cutting on the original object. So you select the first object, hit Command, second object, and choose Cut right here. Make a cut of two shapes. And as you can see, it cuts the, um, the cylinder into the cube here. Um, and if you are unhappy with that, you can always hit Undo. Um, and you'll notice when you do a cut that it combines both um, both of the two pre-existing shapes into one new shape. If you hit this little arrow here, the sub um, 
sub thing folder will show you the two original objects and you can hit space to display them. The other way to get rid of the um, shape that you created through boolean operation is to right click and hit delete and it'll show you your uh, original two objects here. Um, you can also do undo that way, either, either way. So the second operation I want to talk about is the fusion of two objects. Um, so if you select the first object and select the second object and hit fusion, fusion it'll fuse the two objects together. And if you look at the uh, transparency of this object, you'll see that it acts as one object now and the cylinder that was inside the box has disappeared as it exists only as one object now. So the last um, Boolean operation I want to talk about is uh, intersection. And the intersection is to the, the intersecting parts of two objects, basically the things that they have in common. So um, if you take, if you select the cube first and hit command and then click the cylinder and hit intersection, it'll keep the two it'll keep the innermost part of the cylinder because that's the part that the box and the cylinder are both touching and that's useful for some projects as well um, same thing with any of these boolean operations it creates a new object um, just like the old one and you can either copy paste existing objects or display the old objects here um, so that's useful if you want to make a copy of something and change it so the next thing I want to talk about is copying pasting objects so um, if you want to edit an object that's been used in a other operation or if you want to copy and paste any object for that matter you can go um, select the object and hit command C and then command V to copy an object or you can do it the old-fashioned way with just hitting um, copy under the edit menu and then hitting copy paste so that'll work as well now if you look here you'll see that since this box was copied, it made a copy of the box and put 001 after it. Same thing with this other box, too. If you create new objects, it'll just add a number onto it based on which sequence they were created in. Although it's not an operation located in the part workbench here, um, it's another copying option that I want to mention because it's useful for scaling objects if you want to compare sizes and stuff like that. So if you go under the workbench selection and select draft here, um, you'll see this little stormtrooper icon so you can select the object you want to make a copy of and then hit this uh, clone icon to create a clone of the fusion and if you select the clone and select data it'll show you the placement as well as the scale here and so you can scale independently at any axis and it'll say when you first make the copy it'll state as one which is 100 percent basically so if you want to scale the object to 50 percent just type in uh, 0.5. It might take a little while to uh, load when you enter in which scale you want um, based on the size of the object and stuff like that, but that's very useful too. So let's go back to the part workbench now. The next concept I want to mention is useful if you have a ton of items here and you want to compartmentalize your projects. So you can right click your project's title and select create group to create a new folder which you can rename by hitting either F2 or just double clicking or pressing enter as well um, and just enter you know group but whatever you want it to be so and then you can select objects either select them into uh, individually by hitting the command button and pressing the object or just hitting shift for a whole series of objects and you can drag them down into your group folder the next functions I want to talk about in the part window are called fillet and chamfer and those uh, are these two buttons right here so let's go ahead and turn on our fusion here. Um, the fillet function creates kind of a rounded edge based on a predetermined radius and the chamfer option creates a 45 degree cut along the edges that you select. So in order to perform a uh, edging operation you select the first edge that you want and then select either fillet or chamfer whichever one you want and you'll notice in the combo window here um, these are all the edges on the object that you selected and there is the radius option right here so to add more edges just press them here select them individually and you can also use this to select the edges but it's a little difficult because it doesn't say which edge is which and it's not in a kind of basic order 
So once you've selected all your edges, you can uh, choose whatever radius you want. I'll go with one for now and press OK. And it'll create the edge that you want. If you notice here, when you fillet an object or chamfer an object, um, similar to a Boolean operation, it'll create a new object. And if you select the subfolder here, it'll show you the original object before you filleted it. If you want to edit the filleted object's edges, you can right click and select Edit Fillet Edges. Um, so you can add um, additional edges here, or you can change your radius. So that's useful if you um, made a mistake and want to go back and fix it. Even though it's not located in the part workbench, there's another way to create chamfers and fillets um, so that you can preview the different radiuses before creating the object. And it's located under the part design right here underneath the workbench selection. Um, when you select part design, you can see the uh, fillet and chamfer buttons are located right here. And unlike the part, uh, the normal part workbench, you have to select each individual edge by pressing command and then selecting the edge that you want to be included in the fillet. And then you press whatever one you want. I'll do chamfer this time. And here you can see that you can choose the individual radius um, and preview what the size looks like. If you create the chamfer this way, in your project window, it will show a new object and also the original object with the visibility turned off. Now, you can still edit the um, chamfer and fillet parameters here, but you can't add any new edges. You can only edit the size of the radius. So if you want to add edges or take away edges, you have to either delete the chamfer and um, do it again with the other edges or perform a new um, chamfer fillet op operation on the um, one you just created. So there's one last tip I want to talk about for the part workbench section of this tutorial. And I've set up a little example here to kind of demonstrate this, um, this tip. So let's say you have two objects here around a central point and you want to have multiple objects similar to this at uh, equivalent distances from each other around the center point. Um, so instead of making, in this situation, I'm going to make 16 different screw holes here, and instead of making 16 different cylinders, uh, you can just make a fusion of the first two cylinders, and then you can just copy the original fusion and paste it, and then edit the placement of the copied fusion and rotate it by 90 degrees. To continue you can just do the same thing and make a fusion of these two uh, previous fusions, copy, and then uh, rotate this new fusion by 45 degrees and so on and so on. So um, that's a useful way if you have multiple vertices of um, or objects rotating around a central point so you don't have to make um, so many objects and keep subdividing their positions in two axes, you can just copy and paste two fusions and rotate them around a central point. And it saves a lot of time and I found it's very useful. So that's the last thing I just wanted to share here. Um, and once you're done, like in this case, I'm, I'm making, um, or just the example is for punching screw holes into the top of a cylindrical um, object here, so I would just take these two fusions, fuse them together, select the cylinder to cut the objects into, and then make the cut. So that's an example of how to save a little bit of time if you're rotating objects around a central point that I just thought I'd include. Here's another example of the same concept where I created um, different fusions of boxes around a central cylinder in order to create a polygon, in this case an octagon. Uh, which is a little difficult to create through sketching and stuff like that because it requires all the sides to be equal. But if you rotate around a central point, it's a lot easier to create polygons and different shapes like that. So I would just fuse these boxes together here and then cut the central cylinder with this fusion. And I'd have my perfect octagon right here. Or not perfect, but pretty close. So that's just a little tip I thought I'd include.